Hello, it's a pretty lovely, lovely evening once again from here in Tally and hope as always that each one of you are absolutely, absolutely fine. So now beginning the second session of ASMCQ series. Correct. Let's pick up question number 40. Which of the following statement is correct with respect to the inventory? The FIFO method assumes that cost of the earliest units earliest goods acquired are the last to be sold that is incorrect in fact this is true in case of lifo method correct b it is generally good business management to sell the most recently acquired goods first but this is again not correct in the context of fifo method under fifo method the ending inventory is based on the latest units purchased this is correct no doubt about that question number 41 Question number 41 relates to revenue from services. Transaction is usually recognized as the service is performed by. See, actually, let us say an entity has decided to perform some services for a particular customer. And let us say till the reporting date, only 60% services have been performed. So here we are going to use proportionate completion method to recognize the amount of revenue. Suppose total revenue was 10,000. So I will recognize 60% of 10,000. Now let us say till the reporting date, if I have performed 100% of the services, I will use completed method. That means revenue from services transaction can be recognized either on the basis of proposed completion method or completed service method. Both are true. Coming to question number 42, as per AS9, revenue from interest should be recognized. You should be aware of all this thing on time per portion basis. No doubt about that. Correct. Suppose I have invested in a particular company. And let us say current accounting period starts from 1-4-2023 and ends on 31st of 3-2024. And let us say on this particular date, I acquired some debentures. Let us say my investments were in 10% debentures of rupees 1 lakh. And let us say I acquired the debentures on, uh, let us say, 30th of August uh, 2023. I made the investment on this particular date. So quite obviously, in the current year, I will recognize interest for these months. That is September, October, uh, November, that means for next seven months, I will recognize the debenture for this particular period. Whatever interest I am going to get, I will recognize it on time basis. Isn't it or not? So, I think seven months time period is remaining. So, on that basis, on time proportion basis should be your answer. The next one is related to AS13. Accounting standard AS13 deals with accounting for investment. I need not require to tell you regarding this. Question number 44 states that as per AS13, debentures and other securities held for sale in the ordinary course of business are disclosed as a stock in trade under the current asset. Yes, it is absolutely correct. As per AS13, where long-term investments are classified as current investment transfers are made at sometime what happens we know that as 13 deals with investments correct so and in we know that investments are categorized into two part long into two categories long-term investment and current investment you know the meaning very well now sometime what happens long-term investments are categorized into current investment so, when long-term investments will be categorized into current investments, then we will have to take what is the cost of, what is the cost of the long-term investment and what is the carrying amount of the investment. And the lower figure we will pick up. So, when long-term investment will be converted into current investment, then it will be recorded at lower of cost and carrying amount. Question number 46 deals with X purchased goods worth rupees 40 lakhs in October 2022. And till the end of the current accounting year, let us say 31st of March 23, 75% of the stocks were sold. So out of 40 lakhs, 75% worth of the stock is sold at 25% is remaining. Question further states that company wants to disclose the closing stock at 10 lakhs. Further, the question is given that expected selling value is 11 lakh and a commission of 10% on sale is payable to the asset. 
Now, what will be the cost? We know that, sorry, at what value we should recognize it as per AS2? 10% of 40 lakhs, sorry, 75% goods have been sold, so 25% of 40 lakhs, that means 10 lakh worth of goods are still in stock. This is the cost of the remaining stock. However, question has given that this stock can be sold at 11 lakh, but at the same time, we may have to incur some selling commission to the extent of 1.10. So, net realizable value of this particular stock will be equal to 9.90. So, quite obviously, at lower figure, 9.90, I will have to reflect the stock as per AS2. Then, 47. On 31st of 3, 2022, a business firm finds that cost of partly finished goods, partly finished unit on that date is 530. Now, this time, partly finished goods or that is work in progress is given at the end of the year. So, don't add conversion cost to it. Correct? So, this time, you have been given that cost of work in progress or cost of partly finished goods, partly finished goods is equal to 530. Further, it is given that units can be finished, but units will be finished in the next year at an additional expenditure of 310 and we have already reached the end of the current accounting year. So, don't add the additional expenditure. Correct? So, till the end of the current accounting year, partly finished goods are having a cost of 530. However, question says that the finished units can be sold for 750 subject to a payment of 4% brokerage on the selling price. Now, if I am going to compute the net realizable value of these units, the net realizable value will be equal to selling price 750 and I will have to I will have to subtract additional expenditure because in order to complete this unit I will have to spend some amount additional expenditure that is equal to 310 and I will have to subtract the brokerage. The brokerage will be 4% of 750 that is equal to 30. So, 410 will become your net realizable value. Out of these two lower figure will be considered. So, at 410 per unit you will reflect the partly finished goods. Next question again is related to X Limited manufactures. X Limited manufactures a product and details of the cost are given. X Limited in manufacturing a product and its details are such as raw material cost is 4 lakh, direct labor cost is equal to 2 lakh 50,000, variable overheads is equal to 1 lakh 50,000. And fixed overheads, including interest, you know that interest is not considered as part of inventory. So that is why when I have taken here fixed overheads, I have subtracted 1 lakh from 2 lakh 90,000. So the cost of finished product will be equal to 9 lakh 90,000. Further, it is given that normal capacity is 55,000 units. That means if I am going to divide 9 lakh 90,000 by 55,000, then I will get the cost per unit. Now, at the year end, closing stock is 2,500 units and question is asking what is the value of the closing stock. So, if cost of 55,000 unit is 9,90,000, 9, so cost of 2,500 units will be equal to 45,000. That should be your answer. Question number 49. In the process, 100 units of raw material were introduced at a cost of 1,000. You have done process costing so often. 100 units you introduced at a cost of 1000. Further question says that the other expenditure incurred by the process is 600. So, I have added here plus expenses 600. So, now the total cost of 100 units is equal to 1600 units. Further, the question says that of the units introduced, 10% are normally lost in the course of the manufacturing and they possess a scrap value of rupees 3 each. So, out of 100 units, normally 10 units get lost. But at the same time, these 10 units can be sold out at 3 per unit. So, we will recover some cost that is 30. So, now actual position is that cost of 90 units is equal to 1570 units. This 90 will be, this 30 will be subtracted. So, cost of 90 units is equal to 1570. In your process costing, you call it 
normal cost of normal unit. Normal cost per unit is 17.44 if I am going to divide 1570 by 90. Now question is asking us what is the value of the final output. Now your output given to you is 75 units. So quite obviously now you simply multiply 75 units with 17.44 to get your answer. Question number 50 is related with GFK Limited operates a retail business. Now we have done a, a, a not so that most of us actually sometimes neglect their retail selling price method. GFK Limited operates retail business. For the financial year, data is given to you. That means this retailer, what he does, suppose he purchases some units, so quite obviously he cannot sell those units at the same price. He will have to increase the cost of that units and then he will dispose them off. What I mean to say is that opening stock is having a cost of 60, but at retail sale price, opening stock is 80,000. Similarly, he has purchased some goods to the tune of 1,20,000, but retail selling price of the purchases is 1,40,000. So the first target under such circumstances of yours should be to take the difference between to take the difference between retail selling price, now this RS is retail selling price or retail cost, and your actual cost. 80,000 plus 140,000. Total retail price is equal to 220 and total cost 60 plus 120 is 80. If I will take the difference of these two, it will be equal to 40,000. This is margin. And if I will divide margin by retail selling price, this will be known as rate of margin on retail selling price. Rate of margin on retail selling price. That is 18.8%. Now, in this question, question has further given us, calculate the cost of closing stock. We have to find the cost of the closing stock. If sales are made during the year, 2 lakh. First of all, you need to understand from the perspective of the retailer that as far as retail selling price is concerned, he had in the beginning opening stock to the extent of 80,000, of course, at retail selling price. Then as is given in the question, his purchases at retail selling price is equal to 1 lakh 40. So at retail selling price, total worth of goods available is equal to 2 lakh 20,000. Out of that, he sold out 2 lakh. So quite obviously inventory at the end at retail selling price is 20,000. At retail selling price is 20,000. Now all I have to do is to apply this rate to because if I am going to apply this rate to it, I will get the cost. So inventory at retail selling price is 20,000. I will apply the rate 18.18 percent. So I will get the diff, I will get the figure 16364. So that means inventory at cost is equal to this much. Is it clear to you or not? Question number 51. So many questions like this have been given in our notes also. The best limited deals in five products P, Q, R, S, and T, which are neither similar nor interchangeable, at the same time. At the time of closing of its accounts for the year ended 31st, 3, 2019, the historical cost and the net realizable value is given to you. You know better than I actually what you are supposed to do under such circumstances. So item wise, you will have to actually compare and take the lower figure. For example, in this particular case, historical cost of what we call item P is 570, net realizable value is 475, so I will consider 475. Similarly, 980, 1032, I will consider 980. Similarly, 316, 289, I will consider 289. Out of 425, 425, I can pick up anyone. And then, out of 215 and 160, I will take the 16. Now, all items which I have marked, you simply add to get the closing value of the inventory. So when we do the assessment of inventory in this manner, it is said that we have considered item-wise demarcation. Correct? Question number 52. Books of Gym Limited revealed the following. Opening inventory is 6 lakh. 
Now there is a concern by the name of Jim Limit, Jim Limited, and it had inventory to the extent of six lakh, and purchases during the year amounted to thirty four lakhs. Sales during the year amounted to forty eight lakh. At the year end, the at the year end, the value of inventory as per physical stock taking was three lakh twenty five thousand. The companies. The company's gross profit on sales has remained constant at 25 percent. Rate of gross profit is also given to you. However, problem is that the management of the company suspects that some inventory might have been pilfered by new employee. Now, what is the cost of the missing inventory? The question is asking this. So, first of all, what you have to do, you have to find out the inventory. Which you should have had as per the given information. For example, you can find it out. You can simply write opening stock purchases is given to you thirty four lakh. Sales is given to you forty eight lakh. Great or profit on sales is given to you. So twelve lakh will become your gross profit. So your closing inventory will be equal to four lakh. So as per the records which you are having and as per the trend of gross profit which you are having, your closing inventory should have been four lakh. But as per physical stock taking, your closing inventory is three lakh twenty-five. So we may say seventy-five thousand is the missing inventory. Correct. Question number fifty-three again is that there is a dealer. He is having different type of vehicles, and their cost and NRV is given. So in case of Fiat car, I will take. I will consider this value. The lower value we have to consider out of cost and NRV, as each one of you know. Ambassador one lakh fifty five one lakh fifteen Maruti Esteem two lakh sixty five Maruti eight hundred one lakh and Jin two lakh ten thousand. So simply by adding that, you can get the closing value. Question number fifty four deals with contract costing. An amount of nine lakh ninety thousand was incurred on a contract on thirty first of three two thousand twenty three. Certificates have been received to the date to the value of twelve lakhs, against which ten lakh eighty thousand have been received in cash. Now, obviously speaking, this is irrelevant information. Correct. The cost of work done but not certified is twenty two thousand five hundred, and cost of done but not certified is twenty two thousand five hundred, whereas certified work is twelve lakh. You can say so. Because twelve lakh worth of work has been certified, and not yet certified is twenty two thousand five hundred. It is estimated that by spending an additional amount of sixty thousand, the work can be completed in all the respects in another two months. So in next two months, you can complete the work. So quite obviously, you will have to find out first of all your what we call percentage of completion. So, if I am going to compute the completion, total cost incurred so far is nine lakh ninety thousand. In order to compute the percentage of completion, we take the cost incurred so far and estimated total cost. So, your total cost of the contract will be equal to cost incurred plus additional expenditure. You expect to spend sixty thousand to complete the contract. That means your total cost of the contract will be equal to this much. So in this manner, you can find out the percentage of completion. This is your percentage of completion. So percentage of completion in this case will be equal to ninety four point ninety four point two nine percent. Ninety four point two nine percent. Question is asking. Agreed contract price. Actually, this is the contract price. And question is asking: Compute the amount of profit to be taken to P&L. So, what amount of profit I will take to profit and loss account? For that, I will have to compute first of all percentage of completion. Once I will be able to compute that, then I will be in a position to know how much revenue actually I should recognize. So, ninety-four point two nine percent of contract price. Now contract price is given to us as twelve lakh fifty thousand. So that mean revenue which I am going to recognize will be equal to eleven lakh seventy eight thousand six hundred twenty five. And so far we have incurred a cost of nine lakh ninety thousand. 
So our profit will be equal to 1,88,625. Correct? Then question number 55 is given to you. Following details determine the expect from the following detail determine the expected loss or profit that should be recognized in the accounts for the year. In case of contract, you know better than I that if in the initial year, in the very first year, if we feel that by the time we would complete the contract and there would be a loss, then logically as per section 35A, we need to actually recognize the entire loss. Correct? Now, in this question, you have been given contract price as 12,50,000. And cost incurred till date is 10 lakh 90,000. Further, you have been given cost expected to be incurred to complete the contract is 3 lakh 60,000. 10 lakh 90,000 worth of cost you have already incurred. And you are expecting that 3 lakh 60,000 worth of cost you will incur further. Now, suppose at the initial estimate, as per the initial estimate, if I am going to find out the result of this contract, I can find out that contract price is 12,50,000 and estimated total cost will be equal to 14,40,000. Why? Because we have already incurred 10,90,000 and 3,60,000 more we will have to incur to complete the contract. That means finally by the time we would, we would complete the contract, our cost will be equal to 14,50,000. So if I subtract cost from the contract price, of course, in that particular case, my expected loss will be equal to 2 lakh. So if you are expecting that this contract will fetch you a loss, then logically the entire amount of loss need to be recognized in the very first year. Correct? So you can straight away write 2 lakh as your answer, logically. But just to make the point a little bit more clearer, normally what we do under contract, first of all, we compute the percentage of completion. And in order to compute the percentage of completion, we take cost incurred. And cost incurred is given as 10,90. We divide it by total completion of total cost of the contract. That is cost incurred plus cost which you expect to incur to complete the contract. 10,90 divided by 10,90 plus 360. So ultimately, I will get 75.17% as the percentage of completion. And normally what we do? First of all, we write revenue recognition. How much revenue actually I should recognize? My contract price is 12,50. I will multiply it with the percentage of the completion. So 9,39,625 should be the revenue recognition. Now in the first year, we have already incurred a cost of 10,90. Indirectly, when I am recognizing a revenue of 9,39,625, Along with cost 10 lakh 90, it means I have already recognized a loss of 1 lakh 50,375. So that means I will have to create a provision for expected loss to the extent of 49,625 because my total loss of the contract is 2 lakh, out of which I have already recognized 1 lakh 50,375. So this will be my provision. However, in the alternatives, you can simply write 2 lakh. Correct? because your 2 lakh is going to be the loss. Further, in question number 56, you have been given that Z Limited purchased 10,000 shares of N Limited at the rate of 300. Z Limited is a company, it purchased 10,000 shares at the rate of 300, that is equal to 30 lakh. That is equal to 30 lakhs. Brokerage is 2%. So, 2% brokerage, 2% of this will be equal to 60,000. So, 2% brokerage I have also paid and stamp duty is 10 pesa per unit, 10 pesa per rupees 100. That means for every 100, I will have to pay 0 0.10. So, for because I have purchased 10,000 shares at the rate of 300, total amount is 30 lakhs. So, 400, I am paying 0 0.10 as the what we call stamp duty. So how much I will pay for 30 lakh? So that is 30 lakh into 0 0.10 divided by 100 will be equal to 3000. So as you know, investment initially is recognized always at cost and cost means the purchase price plus all the associated expenses like brokerage, stamp duty, legal expenses, etc. So at 30 lakh 63,000, you are going to recognize the investment. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी सेवन पी लिमिटेड परचेज टेन थाउजेंड शेयर ऑफ क्यू लिमिटेड एंड इश्यूड फाइव थाउजेंड शेयर ना देर इज अ कंपनी बाय द नेम ऑफ पी लिमिटेड एंड इट परचेज टेन थाउजेंड शेयर फ्रॉम क्यू लिमिटेड We are purchasing ten thousand shares of Q Limited. Now, question says nominal value of the shares of both P Limited and Q Limited is rupees ten. This is the nominal value. The fair value of the shares of P Limited and Q Limited is eleven point five and twelve respectively. That means the fair value, fair value of shares of P Limited is equal to eleven point five zero. And of Q Limited is equal to twelve. Is it clear to you? And P Limited purchased ten thousand shares of Q Limited. Just wait. So we purchased ten thousand shares of Q Limited, and fair value of Q Limited is twelve. And We gave our five thousand shares to Q Limited, and fair value of P Limited is equal to eleven point five. Calculate the cost of investment acquired. Now, question is asking you what we, what is the cost of the investment acquired in this particular case. This is important. The rule is that if we acquire investment. in exchange of some shares try to understand this if we acquire some investment in exchange of some share i have acquired the shares of a particular company and at the same time i am giving the shares of my company to the other company so at what value this investment should be recognized should i recognize it at 10000 into 12 that is 120000 no The rule is that in that case you are going to recognize the newly acquired asset, which is investment, at fair value of the asset given up. Now you will measure them up at you will measure them up at fair value of the asset given up. Now the asset which you gave up is five thousand, and the fair value of the asset given up is this much. So you will recognize the investment acquired at fifty-seven thousand five hundred. This is. interesting question similarly vxm limited acquired certain investment by giving machinery now in this case vxm limited is an entity it acquired investment but in order to acquire the investment this company vxm limited gave its machinery having a written down value of 47000 having a written down value of 47000 And cash of rupees sixteen thousand. We also gave cash of rupees sixteen thousand. Correct. Question further says that the realizable value of the machinery is twenty thousand. Realizable value of the machinery is twenty thousand. So the machinery which we gave up, although it is having a written down value of forty seven thousand, but its realizable value is twenty thousand. So quite obviously, whosoever will purchase this machinery from us, for him. The value is twenty thousand. Indirectly, that means we gave a machinery whose true value is twenty thousand, and we also gave a cash of rupees sixteen thousand. So all in all, we gave up thirty six thousand rupees, thirty six thousand worth of value of asset. Correct. So just a moment ago, I told you if investments are acquired through exchange of assets, in that case. the cost of the investment will be the value of the asset which you gave up so in this case value of the asset which your entity gave up will be equal to 36000 so 36000 will be your answer is it clear to you question number 60 states that on 11 2019 equity shares 7200 equity shares outstanding in the books of x limited so 7200 shares were there in the books of x limited and on 31st of 5 2019 and 2400 shares were issued for cash and on 111 2019 this entity bought back 1200 shares and net profit for the year ended 31st of 12 2019 is 6 lakh 30000 Question is simply asking you to compute the earning per share, basic earning per share. 
Of course, in order to compute the basic earning for share, we need to have the net profits, that is 6 lakh, 6 lakh 30, and we have to divide it by the weighted average number of equity shares. Now, in order to compute the weighted average number of equity shares, what you are supposed to do is, first of all, on 1-1-2019, it is given that you had 7,200 outstanding share. So, quite obviously, these shares must have been used for 12 months. So, their use is equal to into 12 by 12, 7,200. Then on 35, 31st of May 2019, we issued 2,400 shares. If we are issuing these shares, these shares on 31st of May 2019, that means in the current year, their use is for 7 months. So I will multiply 2,400 into 7 and then divide it by 12. So effectively, it means 1,400 shares. Now we bought back on 1 1, sorry, on 1st of November 2019, we bought back 1,200 shares. So because we are, instead of issuing, we are buying them back. So first of all, you put up a negative sign. Then compute the months, November and December, because your financial year is a calendar year in this case. So into 2 by 12, so negative 200 you will write here. Ultimately, the net figure is equal to 8,400. This is your weighted average number of equity shares. Now you divide your 6,30,000 by your weighted average number of shares to get your earning per share, which in my opinion will be equal to 75. Yes, it is equal to 75 per share. So, with that we come to the end of part 2. And in the next part, the part 3 will be very strong because in that part I have, I would be actually, uh, I would be, uh, uh, you can say, completing questions from accounting standard 21, 23, and 24, 25, and 26. Correct? So, next part will be important. So, please see to it that you attend that particular session and hope that this particular session must have come up to your expectation a wee bit. We are trying our hard to give you as much as possible. So, on such note, we finish up this particular session with the promise as usual to meet you again at 7.30, 8.30 or 7.30 next time.